ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Daniel Goh from New Tech. My presentation today is going to cover four parts. First, I'm going to recap what currently is today's air cargo screening. And secondly, uh, what, what are the protocol or what are the screening regimes that are currently in place? And then third and the fourth part are some of the technologies or methodologies that you can use to you know, um, use for air cargo screening in your respective countries and airports. So a recap of air cargo screening. Now, basically, if we are trying to protect an aircraft and more than 70% of air cargo are actually carried on passenger aircraft. So they share the same cargo hold as your check luggage. So in an airport, you will largely find, first of all, you will check your luggage in. It goes through an x-ray machine, right? Then you go through a walkthrough matter detector or millimeter wave, as is today's uh, practice, and have your hand luggage checked. But this part, the air cargo security part, is something that you don't see because it's normally handled off-site, not close to the passenger terminal. In today's world, you know, air cargo constitutes 30% of international trade. No small feat, but it's growing very fast. Especially high-value cargo are usually carried by air. A small, limited fraction of global air cargo is actually screened. Many airports today practices what they call non-shipper programs. So if I know you well, I tend to let your air cargo go through without too much screening. Screening practices also vary very differently from country to country. We have countries that use the latest and the greatest. We also have countries that typically use docks or very cursory human eyes to look at air cargo. Air cargo by itself is, has these characteristics. Unlike sea container, which is very homogeneous, air cargo tends to be highly variable non-homogeneous. It's very cluttered because everybody shares the same space in the pallet or in a ULD. These are what the threats are in air cargo screening. So the first threats are basically security threats. You can read them for yourself. And they're also customs threats. So these are threats where you know they're looking at tax evasion, duty evasions. But both of these organizations, you know, usually the security people and the customs people, they typically ask to look for one liter of a threat per cubic meter or one kilogram of a particular threat within a ton. So that's a very tall order. You're talking about 0.1% within a big volume of space to look for particular threats. So this is what the world wants. The screening methodology needs to be really safe and reliable. It has to detect what you want to find. And usually, our customers will say, I need it to be easily operated and maintained. I cannot, this cannot cause a bomb to maintain over the life cycle of the machine. And it must be comparable with my operations today and my future needs. <laughs> so what do airports practice today? Many of you can relate to this. Well, there's something called brick bulk screening. So first of all, before the cargo is consolidated in the small parcels or boxes or individual packages, they get screened through an x-ray machine that typically has a tunnel. So this is something that you can relate to. If they are not sure of the result, they do an additional layer of screening using secondary devices, such as trays or liquid scanners, just to make sure that the cargo or the goods are within the parameters of safety. So that's one aspect. 95% of the world's cargo are screened via brick bulk screening. So in today's context, if you visit airports, you will see that this is widely practiced. So you get machines to scan, you know, offloaded, and then it gets scanned and then in a secondary area, in case there are problems, you know, they get a, a re-screen re or you know, the, the operator uh, basically re-looks at the image. Now, 5% of the, the other 5% of air cargo in the world are screened on a consolidated mode. The consolidated mode means that we pack all the cargoes or all the packages into either a pallet or an air container. 
Then you put the entire consolidated cargo through an X-ray machine. So this is how 5% of the world does it. What I showed you previously is how the other 95% of the world does it. There's a very small fraction of the world that does vehicle screening, meaning when the truck or a goods vehicle is brought into the airport parameter, the entire truck with the goods gets scanned. Very, very few airport practices this. I can only name one or two, including Thailand, Bangkok. So, what are the challenges? The challenges are consolidated cargo is very hard to screen. It's very cluttered. I'll show you some images later. Break bulk cargo is very time consuming and very laborious because can you imagine a particular ULD could contain usually or pallet can actually house about 20 to 30 packages and each individual package has to be individually screened in a break bulk screening mode. So in an uh, airport environment, and most of you come from that environment, there is time pressure, right? You've got to get on loaded onto a passenger aircraft. You cannot impede the logistic flow and you cannot delay an airplane schedule. The existing technologies that I've described earlier faces certain limitation. They are very expensive because of the labor component. They are also low speed because of the way cargo gets muddled up and then you have to individually pack them into a pallet or ULD. There's no automation in that, that aspect. And it is very difficult to, distinct, to look to distinguish within clutter. Clutter means I stack metal with non-metal and it's multi-layer. It's very difficult to look at clutters. So I'm going to present to you two solutions. So I'll start off with the 5% the consolidated air cargo screening. So in the consolidated air cargo screening mode, you have a very cluttered pallet or a ULD. You need to be able to look through a very dense set of cargos. So may I present to you, we call it the Findex. This particular system has two technologies in it. It has a neutron technology and it has a um, linear accelerator X-ray technology. So it uses dual technologies. And the reason is very simple. In today's world, the terrorists are getting better at homemade explosives, improvised explosives. The threats that they make are now more and more difficult to find. So you need not a single technology, but you need a combination technology to be able to deter these threats or to detect these threats. So this is for screening of built-up ULD. As you can see from this diagram, you basically pass a consolidated ULD or pallet through the entire machine. It has a high-energy X-ray scanner, and you scan this at the last minute, just before you put this entire pallet into an aircraft. So obviously, it is very time efficient because you can do this at the last minute without having to consolidate or to build up a pallet or a ULD. The labor cost is understandably much lower because, again, you do this in a consolidated mode. And this is what I mean by clutter, ladies and gentlemen. So this is how a typical ULD looks like. You've got various kinds of objects from liquids to TV screens to organics, you know. So that's how a ULD or air cargo typically looks like. The FINDEX, which is the acronym for Fast Interlaced Neutron and Dual Energy X-Ray, long word, F-I-N-D-E-X. The FINDEX imaging technology, therefore, uses, first of all, high-resolution X-Ray, which is the purple, and very cross-sectional uh, uh, analysis using neutron X-Ray. So many of you will ask me, so what's the difference? Well, it is a lot more sensitive than just using X-ray machine. How does Neutron work? Well, Neutron works by basically computing the uh, density against the uh, relative value of the, uh, uh, of, of the Neutron division. 
So with that, they are able to now accurately determine between different kinds of material. So without trying to bore you to death with all this uh, you know, chemistry data, the essential thing is here is what the palette will look like with dual technology, neutron and x-ray. You can now differentiate clearly between various kinds of objects. So the sugar and the water, for example, both looks orangey, but there is a different show in the energy, in the, in, the, in the color of the orange. So that allows an operator to accurately determine exactly and precisely what is the material within the cargo. So for those of you who have never seen what a neutron tube looks like, that's how it looks like. <laughs> And then it basically uses, like I say, X-ray and a neutron detector. So the detectors are very compact. They are good. They have a very, we've built it in such a way that it's plug and play. You do not need to change any of your sites. No additional construction work is required and it's easily maintained. That's a prerequisite because in today's world, air cargo terminals a very limited space. They, therefore, we have designed a system that is very compact. So this is what it looks like in an actual site. So we have uh, installed a couple of these, uh, not a couple of these, so in fact, quite a number of these, uh, namely in Abu Dhabi Airport and in Beijing Capital International Airport. As you can see, it's plug and play. So it has its own uh, facilities, you know, and really the uh, housing, the roof is really more for the operators so that they don't get rain out rather than for the machine. Looking at the threads, now you can now clearly see some of the threads that are, you know, pertinent to security. Weapons, explosives, and also contrabands in the case of uh, smuggling for customs. So when I first made the pre this presentation in July to a joint conference of ICAO and WCO, which is the World Customs Organizations, they were both amazed by this to say, yeah, you know what, we could combine and use this rather than you know, using it for pure security purposes. Now we talk about the 95%. The 95% of air cargo that is screened via breakout mode. I want, to, I want to suggest to every one of you here the use of computed tomography. Those of you who are not familiar with uh, computed tomography, it came from the medical application. Really, when an X-ray spins 360 degrees to try to get a three-dimensional reconstruction of the object. It has a very high throughput. It has up to 1,800 parcels. Now, if you're talking about screening smaller packages, you will probably do double or triple the number. So this is very high throughput. It has automatic built-in explosive detection narcotics. So the operator doesn't even have to look at the image. It has certified detection technology that basically says, I will be able to lock into where the explosives and the threats are. You can use uh, you know, secondary inspections, again, just to do a confirmation of the threat. That's a lot of efficiency involved in an automatic detection mode because now the operator, you don't have to rely on an operator that could be 20 years in the field or could be just a fresh out of school. So this is how computer tomography works. The X-ray spins around an object or the cargo to be screened, and a three-dimensional reconstruction of the image is then instantaneously produced. So this is real time, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a movie. This is the speed at which a image is reconstructed. If you were now to be able to play with this, so this is like taking a mouse and trying to spin it, you can now accurately determine where your threats are and what are the shapes of your threat. So I'm sure those of us who have no X-ray image training interpretation will be able to tell there's a kettle in there and there are metallic tubes in, in there, including a knife right here, if you can see. 
So the CT technology not only gives you a three-dimensional reconstruction, it also gives you a two-dimensional image. So now you can look at the, the difference. A lot of people ask me, so what's the difference between a 2D and a 3? Well, in a 2D image, because it, the, the image doesn't rotate, you are able to find wires much better. So as you know, an improvised explosive device usually has a power cord or wire hooked into it. In a three-dimensional image, because of the way the CT is able to, to produce an image, it gives you a very accurate determination of where the explosive is and the shape of the explosives. So if you combine the two dimension, the 2D and the 3D image, you get what I would call a perfect image presentation. There is a lot of, uh, this is a simple education graph. It is, basically to, it is there basically to tell you that sausages alcohol has about the same atomic number and the same density as some of the threats you see in the world, including explosives uh, and uh, narcotics. So if you don't have a three-dimensional image or dual energy three-dimensional image, it is very difficult to differentiate between, say, water and Semtex. You need this two variables. And to accurately calculate variables, dual energy gives you the, you know, the, uh, uh, the atomic number, but CT technology gives you the density. And with that, that's how we can lock into a particular threat. So with that in mind, this is what you will see on screen. A, 3D, a 2D image, a 3D image that you can rotate, and anywhere that you point, you can actually slice. So for example, this slice is taken probably at this angle. You can look at three different images. Our CT uh, systems are approved by the European Civil Aviation Conference. So it has certified explosive detection uh, you know, approvals from a very reputable body called ECAC, or European Civil Aviation Conference. It's used widely now in Netherlands, China, Australia, and the Czech Republic. So you will find that CT technology is beginning to take over the existing X-ray machines that you see when you came through the security checkpoint today when you enter the IKO building. We at NewTek have also developed expandable detection algorithm. So we are now able to say, besides being able to, 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 to meet the European conference, um, you know, categories of explosive detection in an automatic mode, we can now go to work with a particular customer to say, okay, if you have liquid explosive threats, we will help you to write an algorithm to automatically detect liquid explosives. And we have also worked with customs organizations to say, I want to look for heroin or particular narcotics. We will also be able to do this. And the machine will automatically lock in or zoom in or paint a red box around the particular threats. In today's world, and thanks to Samsung Note S7, lithium batteries has also become some, some, somewhat of a concern. So in an air cargo environment, can you imagine if someone were to ship a lot of lithium batteries, it could well turn into a disaster. So we have also worked with some customs and some security organizations to automatically detect lithium batteries. So the CT technology in the breakout screening mode gives you what I would call expandable detection technology. You tell us the threat, we will write the algorithm to lock into that threat. And that threat could be very peculiar to a certain country. We have a, a, a variety of uh, CT machines from small tunnel to big tunnels, from slow throughput to high throughput to meet the needs of different air cargo screening requirement. I want to summarize, this is the end of my presentation, so I'm ahead of time. The uh, entire presentation with this particular graph. So if you look at breakout screening, 
using CT technology, you now have high throughput, you now have automatic threat detection, and this threat detection is expandable depending on your country's needs. You have a three-dimensional reconstruction that helps operators to now recognize the shape and the size of the threats. You only require a very small operating area because all these have been built in a very compact mode by our designers. And as I've said earlier, we can customize your threat detection. So you tell us what you want, we'll find it for you. In a consolidated uh, air cargo screening mode, which is what 5% of the world are doing today, the Findex or the technology, combo technology of Neutron and X-ray is able to give you time efficiency, lower labor costs. It has this combo technology that we like to say combo technology because if you combine two technology, it works better than a single technology because it gives you more detailed material discrimination. You are able to discriminate between sugar and water, salt and sugar. That's also the added feature of customized threat detection in a Findex technology, and that's really looking at nuclear materials. A lot of nuclear materials are also of concern to security agencies. New tech has very humble beginnings. Uh, we are only about 17 years old. We started in 1997, uh, but we believe in the no country left behind you know, policy adopted by ICAO. So we're very flexible in our offering. If you want to buy it, we're happy to sell it. If you want to rent it, we're happy to lease it. If you want to work out a package with us, come talk to us. We'll figure a way that we can mutually cooperate and make the world a safer place. For that, I thank you very much for your attention.